Howdy YouTube, Stephen Kenny here with TFB and today we're talking about the Guns of Red Dead Redemption 2, specifically the pump action shotgun, known here in the real world as the Winchester Model 1897. If you ain't heard of Red Dead Redemption 2 by now, you must have been living under a rock, or in a rock. <laughs> Ooh, you're funny. He's funny. It's the most popular God? video game of all time, made by the folks over at Rockstar Games, who also made the Grand Theft Auto series. Here she comes. It's an open world cowboy adventure game set in the year 1899 that follows a band of outlaws in a west that's becoming less wild every day. You're a wanted man, Mr. Morgan. There's $5,000 for your head alone. $5,000 for me? Gonna turn myself in? In this series, we'll be taking a look at the gunplay and guns of Red Dead Redemption 2 and comparing them to their real-world counterparts. As you can see here with the pump-action shotgun and the real-world Winchester Model 1897, Rockstar Games is off to a pretty great start recreating this iconic Old West shotgun, albeit with a few artistic embellishments here and there. The player finds a pump-action shotgun earlier in the game at Shea Porter, or you can buy it from a gunsmith for the low price of $148. When the shotgun actually debuted in the real world, it only cost 25 bucks. In the game, the pump action shotgun is a powerful close to mid-range weapon that serves the player well throughout his journeys in cowboy land. In real life, the Winchester Model 1897 was designed by the prolific firearms designer, John Moses Browning. It was an improvement on Winchester's earlier Model 1894 shotgun designed to withstand the higher chamber pressures of modern, smokeless ammunition. Between 1897 and 1957, when they finally stopped making the gun, over a million of these shotguns were produced. It was actually the first shotgun ever to be procured for combat use by the United States military and served from the Filipino insurrection of 1899 all the way through the Vietnam War. The Winchester Model 1897 is a bridge between the Old West and a modern sporting firearm. I recently acquired my own Winchester Model 1897, but I'm not even sure if the gun works. The previous owner hadn't even fired it and couldn't tell me whether or not the gun actually functions. So today we're going to be test firing this gun and cutting down the barrel to a length that Arthur Morgan and his gang would approve of. All right, so we're here at the range to test fire this 87-year-old shotgun to see if she's still got any buck left in her. Because if not, it's going to be a real short ride, as they say out west and an even shorter video. All right, so the magazine tube's a little stiff, but let's see. Hmm. So if you can take a look, she's not picking up rounds. I don't know if you can see that here, for whatever reason. So what I'm gonna do is load around by hand and see if we can get this thing to fire and then see how it goes from there. All right, here we go. So, she does fire, but we're having problems with uh, feeding these rounds and reliable, uh, getting them in the uh, chamber reliably. So. This is one of the big things in Red Dead Redemption 2 is cleaning and modifying your shotgun. We're gonna go to the gunsmith, AKA the garage, where we're gonna cut down this goofy ass hunting barrel and turn it into a cowboy fighting shotgun. And we're also gonna clean all the grime and grit out of this nearly 100 year old shotgun. So stay tuned. You keep treating that like your own child, all right? Good on you. We're here in the garage, and now it's time for me to take this hacksaw to this nearly 100-year-old shotgun. One of the cool things about the Model 1897, um, while the early guns were what's called solid frame models, the later guns, and I think it was only like two or three years before they did this, was um, they made these guns what they call takedown guns, of course. Bear with me here because this is a John Moses Browning design and it's an older design. So it's gonna be a little bit of a pain in the ass, but in theory, 
it should be a takedown gun, which means that, there we go, the barrel comes off. And the reason why they did this at the time was so that you could take your shotgun in two pieces and easily stow it in a saddlebag for hunting or carry it on a train, if you believe that. <laughs> Pretty bizarre, but it was actually one of the first shotguns uh, engineered with a removable barrel, which kind of set the standard once again for modern firearms. So now that we've got the barrel off, let's cut it. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this barrel in the vise and just hacksaw it off. And there we are. So I'm gonna try and clean this up. As you can see, there's some kind of metal shavings in here. And then around here, it's kind of nasty. Um, it is not a straight cut whatsoever. Um, it's actually a very poorly done cut. It might have been worth the $40 that I saved to take it to a gunsmith. But that's part of the fun. So I'm gonna take a file to it here. Oh, shit. Just reopen that cut that the hammer gave me. This is payback for the hammer yesterday, by the way. <laughs> I'm gonna use a file that takes some of the rough edges off here. And like, you know, I'm gonna be re-bluing this as well. So I'm not too concerned with the finish. I'm gonna go ahead and speed this video up for you guys because all I'm really doing is filing it down, checking that it's straight with a level, and then eventually sanding it with smaller grades of sandpaper. I just wanna say that I'm not a gunsmith, I'm just an idiot with a hacksaw and the wrong tools to do this job. So please don't do this at home yourself, or at least don't use this as a reference point. There's a lot of great information out there on how to do this properly and I didn't read any of it. So before you do this yourself, make sure that you wear proper safety equipment, you research or consult with a professional, and you comply with all state and federal laws because the last thing you want is a visit from your friendly Pinkerton Detective Agency. All right. That looks pretty good. This is what it looked like before at 30 inches with the choke, and this is what it looks like now at 20 inches. As you can see, I kind of cleaned it up a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna have to refinish it eventually, but I think it looks incredible. So now I'm gonna take the rest of the gun apart, clean out the insides, see if I can get her working a little bit smoother, and then we'll put it back together and take it out to the range. Essential, I reckon. All right, guys, we're back here on the range after we've cut the barrel and cleaned the gun up a little bit. I haven't had a chance to put a bead sight on it yet, so I'll be using my dead eye for this. All right, here we go. All right. The shotgun works a hell of a lot better. It's way easier to point. The action's a lot smoother, and uh, the exception of this one shell, it looks like we were able to run through all of it. Now this is a badass shotgun. Now one of the cool things about the Winchester 97 is the ability to slam fire the shotgun. So you pull the trigger, and the gun goes off, and as soon as you rack the slide back and push it forward again, and the action goes back into battery, as long as the trigger is still depressed, it'll fire immediately. Now in Red Dead Redemption 2, all of the guns have that single action feel. You've gotta manipulate the action using the button. But in real life, you can do this.
which I think is pretty badass. So at a recent gun show, I was able to find these brass shotgun shells, which are actually period correct for the game. In the 1890s, shooters would have used either paper or brass shells. Arthur's seen with brass on his bandolier. Brass shells were issued any time paper shells would fail due to damp or wet conditions and saw use all the way up through Vietnam until they were replaced by plastics. One of the interesting things about the Model 97 is that the action comes out of the rear of the receiver here, which, as you can see, has bitten me several times today, which is rather unpleasant. It also has an external hammer. The external hammer functioning as a hammer to fire the weapon, but also as a safety. If I had a round in the chamber and decided not to shoot, I would lower the hammer very gently on the round in the chamber. If you were to drop this hammer, and it slipped, the gun goes off. Obviously, this gun likes to bite me, and that's what happens if that was to happen. And whoever's downrange of you, when you accidentally drop a round or accidentally drop a hammer on a loaded chamber, I feel bad for that. That wasn't my fault. It was just one of them things. For people back then, using the hammer as a safety was very common. And uh, that's the way they did it, so that's the way this gun was designed. Oh, ain't that a little old-fashioned nowadays? Apparently not. All right, guys, that concludes this video on Red Dead Redemption 2's pump-action shotgun and the real-world Winchester Model 97. I had a really great time turning this old hunting shotgun into a badass cowboy fighting shotgun, and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Give this video a like, subscribe to TFB for more interesting gun content, and I'll see you on the range, partner.